My name is Catherine Noski. I'm a writer and an academic at the University of Western Australia, where I teach creative writing and uh, Australian literature. And I also edit Westerly Magazine, a literary magazine which publishes creative writing both from Australia and internationally, uh, as well as literary scholarship, uh, primarily based again in Australian literature. I'm coming to you from my home, obviously, working externally at the moment. I'm here slowly being driven up the wall by my dog Max and my cat Oliver, who are both very good at inadvertently photobombing lectures and um, interrupting at inopportune moments. Uh, but I'm also enjoying the chance to reset creatively a little bit from isolation. It's been a, a quieter time in some ways. Uh, my sphere of experience has narrowed slightly and it's been a good moment for me to contemplate what creative project uh, I might move on to next. My, my last creative project was my novel, The Salt Madonna, which was published by Picador Australia in February. Uh, I was lucky enough to be able to celebrate launches uh, before the shutdown really kicked into effect. Uh, so I feel really blessed that I've had that chance to uh, enjoy the release of the book and, and celebrate with my friends, um, particularly when I know a lot of others haven't. Uh, but it has changed a lot about how the book would have been promoted, uh, so I thought I'd read a little bit from that for you today. This is from the very first section of the book. Uh, the book is really a story about stories. It's a story about small communities. It's a story about the things we tell ourselves to make sense of the world. And uh, it follows Mary, a, a teenage girl whose life is really hijacked by the community she lives in. Uh, strange miracles begin happening. Uh, different phenomena occur within the society. And um, the village people uh, in this, this very small remote community focus on Mary at, at the centre of all that and really take over her world. Uh, it's written though from the perspective of Hannah, who's a school teacher and who is remembering all of this happening years later and trying to make sense of how it all unfolded. So this opening is from Hannah's perspective and it's the narrative voice which frames the story as a whole. I hope you like it and I hope maybe you get a chance to read it. Today, I met a girl who looked like Mary, dark eyes, light hair. She sat at the back of my classroom like Mary used to and said nothing. She watched me though, dark eyes, and now I cannot sleep. A story. Once upon a time, or a long time ago, a man called Mulvey started a settlement on an island called Chesil. He got rich hunting the whales until they disappeared. He dragged pasture out of undergrowth and stole the pasture created by others. Fouled the water, ringed trees with deep scars and cleared them. He brought sheep and they died. He bought cattle and they survived. He lived there and he died there and his children lived there and died there and their children and so on until I was born. I lived there and then I left. I used to tell myself it was my mother who made me leave. She stood on the ferry dock as the boat pulled out, but she didn't wave. She just stood there and held me with her eyes until suddenly I couldn't see her anymore and I was gone. Once upon a time, a girl called Mary lived on an island called Chesil. Once upon a time, my mother was dying and I went home. <laughs>